for the 2022 Women's Soccer SUNYAC Championship game. A battle between the two SUNYAC juggernauts. And when I say juggernaut, I'm talking this is the cream of the crop in the conference. The past three coaching staff of the year awards in the conference have been awarded to Geneseo or Cortland. Heidi Axtell's Cortland Red Dragons and Nate Wiley's Geneseo Knights find themselves matched up here today in the championship game for the third consecutive season. So a second throw in in a row from Clammer falls to Simone Neville. Neville with a shot on goal. Made good contact there. It was a nice strike by Neville, but right into the hands of Angel Bennett. Didn't trouble one of the best goalkeepers in the SUNYAC all too much. Bennett there gets asked to Make a save for the first time tonight. Everyone since, since 2016, they've won the title in 2017, 18, and 21. And right on cue there, Geneseo is going to have their first corner of the game. That's going to be Hannah Sullivan, the leading assister on this team. She's got eight assists. She's tied with the Suniac lead with Casenza. She's going to be the one to take this corner on the far side. Right in front of Spendel, and it's a goal! It's an opening goal! Lindsay Wright! Same as last game, Lindsay Wright opens up the scoring for Geneseo, and they take a 1-0 lead on the undefeated in Suniac play, Cortland Red Dragons, the number two seed, Geneseo, on top here early through only 14 minutes. Let's see if Cortland can get their leading score, the conference's leading score, going here. She had a little bit of trouble last time out. They're going to need 16 and white if they want to equalize back in this game. There's a nice clearance there by Bryn Thompson to get Cortland out of trouble. There's Neville there winning possession over Haley Evertson. Here's Neville. Neville with Galuzzo and Kelly in the box. Bouncing ball. It's out in front of Angel. Oh my goodness. And it's a goal by Jaden Galuzzo, the equalizer. Right on cue, Jaden Galuzzo extends her conference leading goal tally to 15 goals. And at the 16 25 mark, we've got a tie ball game. Last time these two teams met, the first half was similar and how close it was. There's a shot on goal by Valeriati, so it's good to see Valeriati healthy and getting into the action early here after the injury. Past, I don't know, three, four minutes or so of play has it was really what a lot of the first half was. It's been a battle for possession in the midfield. Some of the best midfielders in the conference playing here today, and it's showing as a shot on goal from way outside there from Simone Neville. Looked like it actually might have had a chance to trouble Angel Bennett, but an easy catch there for one of the top goalies in the conference. Angel Bennett has been forced to make two saves. Here's Katie Casenza, and Galuzzo's going to leave it off for Bella Casucci, who makes a run up from her left-back position. Casucci, oh, and it goes right over the crossbar. The best opportunity for either team in the second half. Bella Casucci makes a scorching run up from her left-back position. Galuzzo with a perfect little layoff for Casucci, but... Angel Bennett came off her line nicely, stayed in good position, and forced a missed shot there. Couldn't get it on target there was Kasuchi. And into the game, the freshman, Julia Deturis. I wouldn't really even call her a freshman anymore. She's had 17 appearances as Jane Galuzzo with a chance inside the 18 gets deflected. Cortland here really applying the pressure and trying to do everything he can to win this game. Here's Jaden Galuzzo who finds the right foot. She tries to find Jaden Kelly who has to step over a fallen Della Quilla. Jaden Kelly still on the ball, finds it, recenters it, and finds Katie Casenza. Oh my goodness, it was just to the left of the goal, Katie Casenza. It was a beautiful service in from Jaden Kelly who did everything she could to maintain possession. 
and Geneseo escapes a scare there with only four minutes and 30 seconds remaining. That's the best chance either team has had in some time. Can't seem to get by that back line of Cortland, that, that starting four who has started all 17 games for Cortland this year. Here's Jaden Galuzzo, cuts inside to her right foot, has a shot on goal. Oh my gosh, I thought it went in. Everybody else thought it went in too. The bench was ready to storm the pitch, but Jaden Galuzzo just to the right side of the post, and that's the third time now in the second half that Cortland has had a real shot on, on goal, a real opportunity to put the ball in the back of the net, and they haven't found the frame. To overtime we go. The Suniac Championship cannot be decided in the first 90. A goal from Lindsey Wright, an equalizer from Jaden Galuzzo, and we're going to overtime here at Holloway Field. Max Barr with you on the call today. We're going to be right back with overtime. On the far sideline, number one in assists in the Suniac. Sullivan here with the service. Near post tries to find Faye Higgins, but... She ran into Cam Stone, and that's going to be a foul against Higgins, so Cortland there dodges a bullet there early. The only freshman on the pitch right now for either squad. Ball inside the box for Geneseo. It's going to be an opportunity, and it's a missed opportunity for Nicole Bell. That is the first shot for Geneseo in over 75 minutes of gameplay. But she's closed down by the Geneseo back line. And now it finds Jaden Kelly who tries a <laughs> tries to kick it over her head there. It's not going to trouble Angel Bennett all that too much. If that thing went in, I would have broken this microphone with how loud I would have yelled to a second overtime period. So... Just hold on a second, though. Oh, my goodness. Wait a second. Lindsey Wright was taken down in the box, but there was no call there. Wow, okay. So, corner, late corner kick taken by Geneseo. That was a huge little sequence of plays that happened there last 10 seconds there. Oh, my goodness. Lindsey Wright there. That could have easily been calling a penalty kick. Lindsey Wright was taken down in the box there. Remember that moment with only 10 seconds left. So we're going now to the second 10-minute overtime period. Rachel Ehrlich comes off her back line to send the ball back into the Geneseo defensive third. Here's Simone Neville able to maintain possession, and she kicks it out to Valeriotti. Valeriotti has some time and some space. A shot on goal, but right at Angel Bennett. And Angel Bennett now... That's her seventh save of the game. Both teams with only one shot here in this second overtime period. Neither team wanting to commit too many players forward and be vulnerable for a counter. Here's Geneseo with a nice few passes. Almost connecting there with Lindsey Wright. Bella Casucci able to ride that ball out of bounds. And Geneseo over the past few minutes now has been looking a little bit dangerous in and around the 18 here. The past four Suniac championships have been Cortland against Geneseo. It's only fitting that we need penalty kicks to decide this one. My name's Max Barr. I've been with you all day today on the call here from Holloway Field. Kristen Spendel has a save percentage of 88.9. Angel Bennett with a save percentage of 82.1. First up to take the penalty kick for Cortland is going to be Cam Stone, the sophomore out of Central Valley Academy. She has started every game so far for Heidi Axtell's Red Dragons. And it hits the post! It hits the post! And Geneseo erupts here. Now up to take this one for Geneseo, the sophomore, Lindsey Matthews. Lindsay Matthews appeared in 19 games last year, 17 games this year. Here she is. 
off the top of the crossbar. There was no chance Spendel was going to save that one, and now it's 1-0 through the first two for Geneseo. Four more kicks potentially up here is going to be Julia Deturis, a freshman out of Hicksville, New York. She was the Nassau AA Conference Player of the Year last year. Here's Deturis. Slots it to the right side, and Deturis is good, so Deturis keeps Cortland's hopes alive. Now up for Geneseo is going to be number 17, Lindsay Wright, their senior leader of the offense. She's got the goal tonight. She had two goals last game. Leader of this attack, Lindsay Wright. Goes left, fools Spendel, sends Spendel to the right, and that's perfect now for Geneseo. So it's 2-1 to one with three more potential kicks up to go. Here's Jaden Galuzzo now, the leader of Cortland squad, the captain, the leading goal scorer in the conference, Jaden Galuzzo here, trying to keep Cortland's hopes alive. Galuzzo sends Bennett the wrong way, and Cortland able to take a deep breath. Now up for Geneseo. It's number 19, the junior out of Northport, Dana Sheps. Dana Sheps only has two shots in her last eight games. Taking a huge penalty kick here. Sends Spendel the wrong way again. It's now 3-2. to two. Casenza here almost needs to make this one. It's not completely over if she doesn't, but just about. Katie Casenza, first team all Suniac last year as a freshman. Casenza's got it! Sends Bennett the wrong way again, so. 3-3, three, three. Spendel needs a save on one of these next two shots if Cortland wants a chance to stay in it. Anna Sullivan now. The leader of the midfield for Geneseo. Hits the post! She hits the post! Cortland's still alive! Cortland is still alive! Here is Simone Neville now. It's all knotted up at three apiece. Simone Neville started all 18 last year, all 17 this year. One of the leaders for Heidi Axtell. Neville is saved! It's a save by Bennett! Oh my gosh, Angel Bennett might have just won the championship for Geneseo. Oh my goodness. What a save by Angel Bennett, the biggest of her career. Now with an opportunity to win. An opportunity here for Mackenzie Griffin. And it's good, it is good. The Geneseo Knights are your 2022 SUNYAC Tournament Champions. Nate Wiley and company win their third SUNYAC championship in the past four years. Unbelievable.